Hey guys, my name is Corbin Dunn, and today I'm going to teach you how to save time on your CNC machine by using work offsets. I'm going to cover what work offsets are, why to use them, how to use them on a CNC machine, and then finally, how to use them with CNC software, specifically Vectric VCarve and Fusion 360. I'm also going to talk about some key things to be aware of so you don't mess stuff up. Now, when I use the term offset, I mean a work offset, which means something special for CNC G code. If you're a Vectric VCarve user, this might be a little confusing, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Work offsets. First of all, some CNC terminology. You're probably all familiar with your machine, and it has an X axis, a Y axis, and a Z axis. And then it has some particular point that defines the origin. And now, this origin is what we're going to talk about. When you start your machine, you probably hit a button to home the machine. That consistently aligns it at the same location each time. If you don't have homing sensors or the ability to home your machine, then it's probably not going to work out to use work offsets. After you home your machine, what it does is it finds the zero location for X, Y, and Z in machine coordinates. And then you as a user go and move your X, Y, and Z axis to your workpiece wherever you want to put it, and you zero out the X, Y, and Z. And that's your origin. And a work offset is just saving that origin on different locations in the machine and then recalling them later to use them again and again. So there are two reasons why this is really powerful. First, you'll never have to find your workplace origin again. You do it once, you save it, and you're done. And in fact, if you have an automatic tool changer, you never have to touch off your bit again, and so you really don't have to do anything except load your G-code and go. Second, it allows you to easily set up multiple workstations on your CNC machine. For instance, I can have the machine working and cutting at one particular work offset, and then add another work offset, I'll be setting up another part for another operation. When the first one's done, I can just hit go on the CNC machine, and it'll immediately start the second operation in the second location, and I can take the first one off and set it up again for another operation. Work offsets and G-code. G54 to G59 are the G-code commands for work offsets. G54 is the first work offset, G55 is the second work offset, G56 is the third, and so on until G59, which is the sixth. So that means there are only six work offsets that you can store in your CNC machine. I'll tell you more in a minute how you can have a ton more, but first let's talk about these basic ones. When you start your machine up, it probably loads into the default work offset of G54, and that's what everything usually works in. And usually your CNC software will show it somehow. I'll point it out here in Mach 4. And I'll also point it out here in Tormax Pathpilot. To change the work offset, you just type it in in the MDI field and hit enter. And now this is modal, which means once you change the offset, it's going to stay in that offset until you change to another offset. Once that work offset is active, you can jog your CNC machine and find an origin, some on your table, zero it out, and now it's going to be saved in that offset. So now let me go through an example of setting two different offsets and switching back and forth between them. Okay, I'm going to go to the MDI tab in Mach 4, which is what I'm using. Delete what I had here, and I'm going to type G55. And on Mach 4, I have to hit Cycle Start MDI to make it execute it. And so after I do that, my coordinates change, and what I notice in my little readout here is that I have G55 written, meaning that offset is active. Another way of doing it inside of Mach 4 with Avid CNC screen set is you just hit this button, G54, G55, G56. We're going to go with G55. Doing it in the MDI should work for basically any type of CNC machine. Okay, so I want to set my first offset at one particular location on my table, and I want to be able to go to it again and again without having to do any touch-offs. So I'm going to have my dog holes for alignment on my CNC table. Three of them will determine a quarter, and then I can put my workpiece into the corner. And now I can either use a touch plate to find the edges, an edge finder, or a Heimer 3D sensor, and I can just find this particular corner. 
I'm going to set my z origin to be the CNC table, and then my x and my y. Okay, so I found this origin, and now I'm going to go ahead and save it. Okay, so I have the G55 offset active, and so now I can just zero my X, Y, and Z. The Z you could use the touch plate. And now what I've done is I've saved this offset. That's it. Now let's create a second offset, same X location, but have the, say the Y be 20 inches down the table. To do that, we're just gonna move the Y axis 20 inches down. I'm gonna use the MDI to do that. So in the MDI, I'm gonna type G0, which is a rapid move. Make sure that your Z isn't gonna hit anything. Your bit's not gonna hit anything. And I'm gonna type Y20. I'll hit cycle start. And I hear my machine moving. Now I wanna save this as my next offset. Let's use G56. So I go to the MDI and I type G56. I hit cycle start MDI. And like before, the location, the offset being active is shown somewhere in your UI. I'll highlight it here in Mach 4. So now I can just zero out my X and Y here inside G56, and it is now saved in G56. And now I can switch easily back and forth between those two offsets. So inside of the MDI, I can go back to G55 by typing it, hit cycle start, and notice in my DRO, it is showing my Y at 20. I can go back to G56, hit cycle start, and it's showing the Y back at zero. How to use work offsets. So now that you know how to set a work offset and restore it, let's talk about how to use them in software. First of all, let's discuss Fusion 360. If you're only interested in Vetric Carve, use the chapters below to jump to that section. In Fusion 360, I'll go over to the manufacturer section and let's take a look at one particular setup. So if you're using Fusion 360, you have setups. Inside the setup here, you're going to have a post-process tab. And what we want to look at is the machine WCS on the last post-process section. And what we do here is a zero or a one means G54. 2 means G55, 3 means G56, and so on. So let's use G55. I'm going to put a 2 here and hit OK. And so now when I post-process this, I'm going to give it some name. When I go ahead and open the G code and read through it, one of the things I'm going to see is this. It's going to start the spindle, and it's going to do a G55, and then start executing all the code. This is pretty cool because it will automatically switch the appropriate offset for me without having to do anything. Vetric VCarve and work offsets are a little bit difficult. VCarve does not natively support traditional G-code work offsets. And I know what you're thinking, hey, what is this section of VCarve? When in the setup, you see a checkbox for use offset. I'll talk about that in a minute, but that is not an actual G-code offset. So in VCarve, you will have your tool pass that you generate, and you're going to hit save. And then you're going to save the tool pass, which runs the post-processor. The way to use offsets in VCarve, the best way to do it is probably to edit the G-code. So somewhere in the G code. Now, one of the things that I've noticed about VCarve and my particular post-processor is VCarve doesn't assign any particular offset. It doesn't do a G54, doesn't do a G55, or nothing. This can be good and bad, and for your particular post-processor, you should look in VCarve and see if it outputs a G54. If it did output a G54, let's say it had someone written right here, a G54, to use the G55 offset, just rename it. If it doesn't have anything written there, like mine, I'm gonna just add it in. And a good place to add it in is probably after your starting code. You can add in a G55, and then all the rest of the code in the file is gonna work using that offset. This is a good way to do it, but it has some disadvantages because 
let's say you go and regenerate those toolpaths in vCarve, you have to remember to go and edit the file and set the offset again. If you forget, it, bad things could happen because you're going to use the wrong offset, potentially. Now, another way to work around this with vCarve is to manually set the offset before you run your G-code. So if you know vCarve is not doing any G54s or anything in its post-process file, what I'll do is I'll go to the MDI inside of my CNC control software. I'll, let's say I want to run it at G56 offset. I'll type G56 in the MDI, hit enter, run my vCarve code at G56. If I want to run a different one at G55, I'll type G55, hit enter, and then run the G code. Now, this is problematic because you could have some human error. You could totally forget to change the offset, which might be really bad. So be cautious with it. Copying offsets. So another way to use offsets without editing G code, having to remember if you're in the right one or not, is to just copy them from whatever offset has your saved position to G54, the standard offset that a lot of G code generates to. And so let me show you how to do that. So let's say you start your machine fresh and you want to copy that saved G55 offset to G54 so you can run some G code. So here's the way I would do it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is in the MDI, I want to go to the G55 offset. So I type it in G55 in the MDI, cycle start or hit enter. Now I want to go to the 00, zero location and copy it over. So what I'm going to do is my machine has a go to work XY0. I could hit that. That's super handy. But if you don't have that, you can just use the rapid movements to do it. So we're going to do a G0, X0, Y0. Before you hit cycle start, make sure your bit is clear enough to not hit anything. I hit cycle start. My machine should now be right at G55's X, Y, zero. I could also use a G0 down to Z0. Make sure you don't have anything that your bit's going to hit. In fact, don't even have a bit in it. Just go down to it. This is really only useful if you're using an ATC. If you're not using an ATC, basically your Z doesn't matter because you always have to touch it off. So I'm going to go down a little bit to zero. I just manually jogged my machine to really close. So now I'm in it. I am at G55, X, Y, and Z is all zero. I can go back to G54, type G54 in the MDI, hit cycle start. And now all I have to do is hit zero on X, Y, and Z. And I've zeroed out my offsets and copied them from G55 to G54. And I could just run my G code here and G54, and that's pretty easy. I used this technique for quite a while before I really learned how to use them in software. So your CNC machine probably has more than six work offsets. Let me talk about how to access those. Now this is very specific to a particular CNC control software as they all might be slightly different. So it's good to look at your manual, but in general, it'll probably use one of two ways of doing it. So as I talked about before, the general work offsets are all stored at G54, 55, G56, all the way down to G59. And then to get past that, what Mach 4 does is they do G54.1 P X, where X is a number such as one, two, three, four, and five, et cetera, to access up to, I don't know, a hundred or more extra offsets. Now some other CNC control software might do it a little bit different. For example, Tormax PathPilot to access past G59, they do it by doing G59.1, G59.2, G59.3, and so on and it works the same way as all the others. You just type it in the MDI to activate that particular offset. But another syntax that you'll see is G59PX, where X is a particular offset number. So for example, G54 is the same as G59P1, or offset one. G55 is G59P2, offset two, and so on. And so G59P7 is offset seven. These directly correlate to the numbers that we would put in the WCS field of Fusion 360, and Fusion 360's post-processor will actually generate this syntax for Mach 4. Mach 4 supports this, but I don't believe Tormac's PathPilot supports this particular syntax.
general best practices. So in general, I use G54 as kind of my scratch offset, which means that I'll freely reset X, Y, and Z in G54 because uh, it doesn't matter too much. I'll just use it and reset it, no big deal. But all the other offsets I have saved at specific locations on my CNC machine so I can recall them quickly without having to touch anything off, which is great. But once you have a lot of offsets, it starts to get confusing as to what one particular one is and where it is. And I'll deal with this a couple of ways. I'll physically write it on my CNC table. Another way I do it is to keep a text file on my CNC machine that just notes where all my offsets are located. And so that way I can easily find them and go to them. I really wish that the user interface for the CNC machine had some way of showing what offset I was in with a particular name, and that way I could easily know which one I'm in, where it's at on my CNC machine, just by giving it a descriptive label. And for Mach 4, I could probably customize this, and it might add that feature into my screen set at some point in the future. Things to be aware of. So let's say you have a manual tool changer. You start your machine, you load it up, and it resets to the standard G54 offset. So you go and you wanna to touch off your Z with the bit you just put in, you touch it off on your touch plate, and that's gonna reset your Z0 in the G54 offset. Then you go and run some G code, and the G code from Fusion 360, or VCarve or whatever, set G55 as the offset. Now that's gonna be bad because the Z0 isn't gonna be what you touched off on. So always make sure you're in the proper offset when you're doing a touch off on your Z. Now, if you have an automatic tool changer, that isn't a big deal because the tool heights are automatically saved at the machine, and so resetting your Z isn't a big deal. And because of that, for my offsets, when I have an automatic tool changer, I always use my bed as my Z0. Vetric V-Carve's offset. Let's talk about Vetric V-Carve's offset. In V-Carve, you have the material setup, and there's this use offset section. And so when you check that, that is just telling in VCarve, physically, how far away this is from the origin. And this is really handy to use because I could set, say, a piece at 30 inches off of my current location. And VCarve actually shows this. If I hit OK, regenerate G-code. I can see my Y origin's way down here, but the workpiece is now 30 inches away. Mach 4 tips. So if you're using Mach 4, there is an offset table that you can use to edit things. And so if I go to offsets, I have a full fixture table. Another way to access this is through view fixture offsets. And what these are, these are just all your offsets in machine coordinates. And one of the things that I will do is let's say I want to have a new offset, the same as one particular one, but have a slightly different location. I can go here, copy, and just manually paste it in. And this makes it really easy to copy an offset from one number to another. Another handy thing in Mach 4 is to make sure you back up this file. So if you accidentally zero out an offset, you can find out and reset it. So there is a file, profiles, Avid CNC, or whatever your profile is, fixture tables, fixture tables.tls is storage of all your offsets. You can back up this file and you can also diff it. I store it in Git in the repository so I can know if I ever changed any offsets accidentally that I shouldn't have. Another thing I've noticed about Mach 4 is it doesn't really seem to write to the fixture table until you exit Mach 4. So it's probably good practice to exit Mach 4 every now and then to make sure your fixture table is actually written out to disk in case you get a crash of Mach 4 or a power outage or whatever. So that's pretty much it for work offsets and how I use them on my CNC machine. Hopefully you found this video useful and um, like, subscribe. It encourages me to make more videos. Thanks and bye everyone.